Hello lovely people. I welcome you once again to Bright and Clarice channel. Thank you all for clicking. This is episode 12 on a six bedroom house that we're putting up for Mr. Isaac and Madam Joy. All right, so this happens to be the final episode on the beautiful six bedroom house that we are putting up for the lovely couples. Okay, yes. So once we are done with the superstructure, which is phase two, phase three is going to be the decking. Are you with me? The decking entails a lot. You know, the wawa board, the plywood, the workmanship, the iron rods. The bigger your project, the more iron rods that you will need. There's going to be secret beams, okay? Um, beams projecting underneath your flow decking. Some people want a flat um, flow decking, but usually it doesn't happen that way. If you look at the span, a span more than 20 feet will need a beam underneath. As per civil code, any beam spanning beyond 20 feet, you need a beam to come underneath. Maybe it's going to protrude around 20 centi or 30 centi. Okay, maximum 30 centi is enough to protrude underneath the flow decking. You understand? You need these beams to, so, to hold the slab from sagging in. Are you with me? It is very, very important. And then such overlappings, you will need 20 mm rods, okay, to be able to hold this slab properly. In your view is the total cost, which is $88,398. We've been paid for the foundation and the superstructure. We are heading towards the, how do you call it, the flow decking. So total is giving us $97,000. 238 97,238 as the total cost of the project it is very very important so i welcome you back to dowenya a beautiful place as i always say i love the house i love the size of the plot are you with me yes i wish the front was spanning about a hundred as well so he can have enough space at the front of the house it would have been so beautiful it would have been so beautiful because the front is only spanning to 70 feet are you with me yes and as the project size is showing this is the plot size showing 138.9 feet by 70 feet so from the back here it is stretching 138 all the way to the last end it is stretching 138 and from that corner towards your right hand side to the road is spanning 70 feet are you with me so this is the back of the building. Um, usually we live about five feet from the fence wall to the main building is five feet as per standard. If you want to go for your permit, if you turn that in, the architect design everything, they have to leave a gap of about five to seven feet, mostly seven feet. But you can bring it down to five feet is enough. It's the standard. Are you with me? Anything less than that will not be approved by um the permit department are you with me yes so that's how it goes that's how it goes so hopefully um by um maybe in january god willing 2024 um we should be working on the flow decking okay hopefully by january 2024 we should be working on the flow decking yes the iron rods alone entails a lot are you with me? Yes, iron rods, the boards, all these are cost, you know, intensive. Are you with me? So, uh, virtually, this is how far we have come. Look at this pillar. It's taking one, two, three, four boards at the front and the other side. So, just one pillar, it is taking almost about eight to ten boards. Are you with me? And that is how big it is because there we have some pipes as well. And the concrete has to be very thick, very thick. Are you with me? Being thick means that more cement. Are you with me? More cement, more sand, all these put together. All these put together is very, very important. And therefore, I urge that in case you need our services, my name is Mr. Bright. I prepare estimate for people. Okay, in case you need an estimate, uh, kindly send me an email at brightandclara at outlook.com. Okay, yes. And once estimate is ready, 
if you give us the permission, we will go and build your house for you. Very beautifully. Are you with me? Yeah, so Stephen is taking his time and he's showing us the back. This is the back of the building. This is the maze cottage. Okay, and this is going to be a power room. Okay, where the solar battery, because Mr. Isaac and Madam Joy want to be self sustainable. Okay, so they're going to have their solar panels and the batteries are going to be in this um, electrical room. So from here, it's spanning from here. Look at that. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. So from here, it is spanning to the road 70 feet. Okay, from here to the front as he's moving at 70 feet. Are you with me? Yes, yeah, so this is the garage. To your immediate right, this is the garage, which is a closed garage. Are you with me? This is a closed garage. So he can drive in and park his car. And then through the garage, there's a walkway that he can go through all the way to his room. He doesn't necessarily have to come out of the garage because once he gets into the garage, automatically the gate will close. You understand? Yes. And Steven and his team are cleaning because we are almost done. So they are cleaning everywhere. It is very, very important. They say cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> so we have to clean everywhere, weed the entire compound, pick all the rubbers, all the papers, all the food, everything that they drop on the they need to pick everywhere and keep the site clean. It is part of their responsibility ensuring that the site is clean. Are you with me? Look at the windows. The windows beautifully designed by Mr. Steven. He pays attention to details. That's one significant thing about him. You know, when it comes to construction, the details actually brings the beauty. Those details brings the beauty. And therefore, if you have an artisan who is just stacking up the blocks, stacking up the blocks, he's not paying attention to the drawing. And even if the architect made a mistake, he's going to repeat the same thing. At least follow the drawing, understand this and that and that and that. So if there's a mistake, you can even spot it out and rectify it. Are you with me? Yes. So this is the diamond shape area where the staircase is going to be. So I'm going to post that on the screen so that you can see it. Okay, so that's the beauty of this front view. You understand? That's the beauty of it. It's very unique. It's very unique. You need careful thought to be able to come up with that design. You need a careful thought. You need to understand construction because all this arc or the diamond shape is not indicated in the architectural drawing. It is not indicated there. They only put that on the 3D. And that's why some architects are very funny. They emulate certain things from anywhere and then you just put it in the 3D to make it look so beautiful. But they will not put it practically. It should be part of the drawing with measurement. You understand? But all these was not part. So Steven and myself, we have to come up with our engineering, you know, to be able to come up with that act. It, it was a tough one though, but Steven and myself, we did a great job. We did a great job on that. Okay, this is the main entrance. To your right is a is a window. Beautiful. I like I like that window. Okay, it's gonna go all the way to to hit the slab. Are you with me? It's gonna go all the way to hit the slab. So the client wants the doors to be very high, probably more than nine feet. I know because the standard door height is about seven feet. It's seven feet, not about seven feet. It is seven feet. And if you want your door to be more taller than that, it means that it has to go all the way to hit the slab. So there wouldn't be any lintel. Once you bring in lintel, it means that your door height will reduce. And that will be seven feet. And that is the standard height of any other building. Are you with me? And therefore laying the blocks for seven feet, the, the highest of the block will be 10 cores. But here we are laying 12 cores. 12 cores in addition. Are you with me? Yes, it is very, very important. So the block size is 18 inches. Recent time, most people reduce their block sizes. So even when you lay um, 10 cores, it's not enough. You would have to lay 11 cores. Are you with me? But when you get a good block size, which is exactly the 18, uh, 19 inches thereabout, you can lay 9 cores and you get your height. 
or if you don't get nine calls you have to lay 10 calls to get the height that you're looking for but if you want the height that we are achieving now we normally lay 12 or sometimes 13. we lay 13 calls high and that is a good one it makes the height of the room you know very beautiful your ceiling fan is up there you can do your plasterboard your pop anything can go there your air conditions you can do a ducting air condition the height is really good and that alone helps are you with me it helps a lot to bring that air and good ventilation into the room are you with me and whatever door design that you're looking for you can fit it right in there so we consider the door with the width of the door is also important are you with me mostly a normal standard door is 90 cm okay is 90 cm for a normal standard door are you with me but if you want a, a big lap proof door which is a one and a half door it has to be four feet some people go four feet and a quarter are you with me yes for a normal standard big lap proof door yes so this is how far we have come I think this is the final place that needs to be cast. This is going to be this is the electrical room. Yes, yeah, so there is an electrical room and then there's a solar um, panel room, which is for the batteries. And here we're going to have our distribution board and our changeovers. You understand? And that is very good. Most houses don't have the electrical room. You don't necessarily have to be hanging your distribution board and meters and everything in a corridor. It looks bizarre it's it's disgusting okay try and make sure your architect design and apportion everything accordance to you know beauty and architecture electrical room your meters your distribution board everything should be in an enclosed environment where it is closed you open it when you enter this is an electrical room okay and then the inscription should be on the door electrical room you understand and then when you open it, there you have your changeover, you have your distribution board, your meter, and everything is there. And mostly here in Dubai, we place meters on the fence wall. So meters are not your property. That's for the government. So that should be outside. And it should be on the fence wall because some meters can be read digital. Okay, and the old ones, you have to come and take the readings. So mostly in Dubai, they are converting old meters into the new ones where it can be read digital. Just by sitting in an office, they can know how much you're consuming. But the old ones and the new, all of them are by the fence wall and they provide a waterproof bucket. Okay, yes, a waterproof enclosure. All those enclosures are waterproof. And the meter is in there with a screen. So any person from, from like for me, as I'm working in the Dubai electricity, if I am in the meter section, I will just go by the fence wall and take my readings. You understand? But that is for a different department. I am in the emergency section. You understand? So I think we have come in a modern way. Everything should be designed with beauty. Look at this. Is it not beautiful? If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. This is the final episode on Madam Isaac, Mr. Isaac and Madam Joyce project. And we will come your way with the um, decking, hopefully by next year, 2024. Yes, January 2024. And I believe you'll be there to meet and we will sing all the way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bye-bye.